All right, so now we're doing a three-phase transformer ratio question. Uh, if you're not in my class and you're watching this on YouTube, then there'll be in the comment section, there'll be a link to the PDF that you can uh, download. Or you can just take a jot down and write down this, this question if you want, or just take a picture on your phone, uh, and then you can work away at it with us. Uh, if you're a teacher and you're watching this and you're stealing all of my material and using it in class, then share the love. Uh, send me some stuff uh, back. So a lot of people are watching the videos and then using them in class. Uh, it would be great if you could also share your material and then everybody can uh, learn from each other. All right, guys. So we got 600 volts on the primary. We got 208 volts on the secondary. So if you want, you can, you can jot that down here that that value right here is... Easy now, that's 600 volts there. Uh, and that is our line voltage. Let me just clean that up. So again, any value from the previous lesson, any value that's on the outside is gonna be the line value. So those voltages are on the outside of our windings here. So 600 and 28. And again, if you're watching this, we're doing this in Canada. And then again, our standard voltages are 600 and 208 volts. So on a delta, delta circuit, the phase voltage is exactly the same as the line voltage. If you take your fingers and go into the winding there, you can see that it's the exact same voltage on the inside. So the voltage on the inside is also 600 volts. But the values on the inside are called the phase values. So again, this guy is going to be 208 volts, but those guys are going to be... Two uh, on the inside. So 600 volts on the line, 208 volts on the line, meaning 600 volts on the phase and 208 volts on the phase. Okay, so that's our step one. Well, that's my step one. You may want to go right to the ratio if you want. So the ratio is based off of the phase value. So um, on these guys where we have a delta to delta, <clears throat> then both the phase and the line values are going to give us the exact same ratio. But once we get into a delta to y or a y to delta, that's, going to, that's not going to hold true. So um, I'm going to put here in big bold letters, the ratio is based on phase values. So for this guy, not a big deal. Uh, but in subsequent ones that we look at, it, this will be key. If you use the wrong ratio, then you'll get the wrong values. So uh, for our voltages in Canada, a lot of times the ratio ends up being uh, 2.88 to 1 or 5 to 1. So let's see what this guy is. We're going to take our primary voltage of 600 volts and we're going to divide by 208 volts on the secondary. So we got 600 divided by 28. And that gives us 2.88. So our ratio and a lot of these ratios as we go through are either going to be 5 to 1 or 2.88 to 1. It just works out with our standard voltages in Canada. Like if, if it was 600 to 120, then it would be a 5 to 1 ratio. Here it's 600 on the phase to 2.8 on the phase. And again, remember that like this winding right here is inducing a voltage onto this winding on the secondary. So it's the phase values that are transferring the energy there. So we have a ratio of 2.88 to 1. And a trick that we've had on previous questions is that we've put an arrow to denote higher voltage, an arrow down to denote lower voltage. Again, that same ratio is going to be on the phase. That ratio is identical to this guy down here. And now for our currents, we'll do our currents in red here they're going to be the inverse. So this one is going to be a lower current, and this is going to be a higher current. And again, that's so that we have power in is equal to power out. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, let's look at uh, this value right here. We have a phase current of 5.77 amps. So don't have very much room, so let's put that right here. So on the inside of the delta, we have 5.77 amps. Well, we know from all of our three-phase calculations that this line current on the secondary is going to be equal to the phase current multiplied by root 3. So that del the current on the outside of the delta is always higher by root 3. So we've got 5.77 times root 3 
times the square root, where's my square root? Second function square root of three is equal to, and that gives me 9.99 amps. Okay, so essentially 10 amps. Okay, so the current on the outside is gonna be roughly 10 amps on the line. Excellent, okay. Now we're going to find our phase values and we have to use that ratio there in order to find our primary phase current. So again, we're gonna use this ratio right here, uh, but we're gonna use the inverse. For the current, we're gonna have a one to 2.88 ratio. So anytime that we see this arrow pointing down, that means that we have to divide by the ratio. So this phase current right here is gonna be equal to our secondary phase current divided by our ratio of 2.88, so 5.77 divided by 2.88. And that gives us basically two amps. Okay, again, it's a delta, so if we have two amps on the inside, on the phase value, then the value on the outside is going to be that two amps multiplied by root three. Okay, so again, we'll take our calculator out. We'll do two amps times the square root of three, and that gives us 3.464. Okay, that's our line value that corresponds to the two amps on the phase. And this guy is 3.464 amps on the outside of that delta there. Beautiful. Last thing we need to do is just find the, uh, the VA. And now, careful with this one. On the previous questions, we have been doing just voltage times current. These guys are going to be V line, so 600 volts on the line, times I line, times the square root of 3. Okay, over here... Now these guys are going to be close, but they're not going to be exactly the same. Over here on the secondary, we have 208 volts on the line. We have, what, 9.99 amps on the line. And we'll multiply that by root 3. And hopefully I haven't made any mistakes. And we'll see that those two values are roughly the same. Let's start off with the primary. So we have 600 volts times 3.464 times the square root of 3. And that gives us 3, 35.99. So um, I'm just going to basically say that's uh, 3,600 VA. Okay, so that's roughly equal to 3,600 VA. And hopefully, if we do our final VA here on the secondary, we'll see roughly the same value. So 208 times the 9.99 times the square root of 3. Come on, buddy, let's see, 3,600. Oh, excellent, 35.99. And again, it's roughly equal to 3,600 VA. So I've just rounded up there because with rounding errors all the way through, like here I use two decimal places, here I use three. Uh, so we don't need to be too tight on the, uh, on the rounding issue there. So VA as a check for this guy is gonna be equal on the primary and the secondary, telling us that power in is equal to power out. All right, guys, just to throw in the, the steps there. Um, let's see, our second step was the ratio. So we found the ratio. Then we found this current on the line there. Then we took the ratio for the, the current and found our primary phase current. Then we found our primary line current. And then we finished off with the VA for either side on both the primary and the secondary. All right, hopefully that makes sense. If it didn't, then leave some comments below. If you like this video, give us a like, uh, and we'll see you on the next one, guys. The next one, we're gonna keep going. So we're gonna do a whole whack of different three-phase uh, ratios in that we'll have a delta to delta, a y to y, a delta to y, y to delta, all the different uh, ratios going through. Uh, and we'll see that the ratio is always based off of the phase values in coming videos. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.